Yes, it's steady on now. We, we, we've got the meeting later. Well, indeed, but if I'm going to read tonight, my creativity requires oiling. Yes, well, well, don't, well, don't you think it's oiled enough for now? You know, tonight, I'm going to give you a recital you'll never forget. I think my patrons deserve nothing less than my shame. Oeuvre. Oh, that, that's an egg, isn't it? Uh, not quite, no, it's, no. In this case, it's a bird. The canary's last song. Ah. Yes, indeed, gentlemen. This evening, I'm going to shovel fresh hot right into your ears, and if that doesn't deserve a drink... Will my character be in it? Uh, yeah, um, yes, perhaps, but, I, you know, I'm torn between a variety of extracts. Uh, an libation might uh, help clarify my decision. Come on. Uh, no, no, Tar. Uh, I wanted a word with you, actually. Yeah? Well, I'm not sure he's quite the right place. Well, what is it? Is she dead? Is he all right? Oh, yeah. He's all right. But the other prisoner he attacked is very badly hurt. So they've cancelled your dad's parole. Idiot! Look, could you all have your checks ready, please? Oh, oh. Right, all right, keep your hair. Oh, happen I know how you lost it now. There you go, made out to Lionel Hipkiss 1S, like yourself. Oh, thank you, Audrey, yeah. Thank goodness senility's not catching. I'll still have my marbles in my satchel long after you've gone gaga. Here. Well, now, Blanche, you can officially say you are a patron of the arts. Hardly. You've made this out to Lionel Blair. I think he's got enough money, don't you? Oh, give it to you. Oh, I know what it was. I was watching Tony Blair on the news. Now make out another one. Now win your own time. Is, uh, is cash acceptable? Oh, eminently. <laughs> it feels so... So vulgar, so cheap to take this from you when I know how hard. Well, it's it's an investment. There is four hundred there. If you if you want to count it. No, oh, no, no, no. I trust you. Well, concession. Yes. Yeah. Bless you, Roy. Bless you. I've got all the checks in. Ah, uh, signed, sealed, and dated. Yes, sir. Perhaps if I might just say a few words. I came to this street a poor stranger, but I leave tonight richer than I could ever have imagined. In three short weeks, <coughs> you've clasped me to your bosom, taken me in, and truth to tell, I've taken you in too, right here. I can't think how to thank you enough. And all I can do is offer you the gift of my gift. So, ladies and gentlemen, the canary's last song. Oh, my She was chuffed to see us, wasn't she? Well, I doubt she gets many visitors. No, I mean, pleased to see us, you and me. She obviously wants us in her life. I've got a lot of time to make up for. It's going to be great. Jay, when you're concerned... What about? Your mum. How she's living, how she is. Well, the house was a bit of a tip, but... Oh, come on, Jay. It wasn't the house. It was her. She's fine. She was not fine. Could you not smell the booze in her house? Oh. Come on, look. I know you love her and all that, but be honest with yourself. The dinner, the plonk she was knocking back. Do you not put two and two together? I'm sorry, Jay. Really sorry, but Carol's got a drink properly. No, no, no. No, Shane. You're the one with a problem, Leanne. I've had a really good day today. I was happy, and you've just gone and ruined it. Fred Elliott left the tiny pit community a mere boy. His father's anger ringing in his ears, his mother's tears staining his shoulder, his own ambition burning in his belly. But he'd returned a man. His broad chest straining the buttons of his calico shirt, the manly bulge of his toned thighs tugging at his tweed breeches. He'd been called home by a siren schoolboy song. Do you hear the canary? 
singing his final song. Do you hear the canary? He's been down yon pit too long. Do you hear the canary above the widow's cry? Do you hear the canary? He knows it's time to die. Oh, I'm filling her. Oh, shush. The rhyme always filled Fred with foreboding as a lad, but now this fear <laughs> was lent a terrible weight by the crisp mining engineer's diploma sheathed in the pigskin document wallet lodged under his ample arm. Oh. Oh. Excuse me. I thought Fred were a miner. Well, minor, mining engineer, minor discrepancy. <laughs> no, think of it as a promotion. Any more questions? I have one or two. Well, if it isn't the nitwit in nitwit, I'm afraid I started without you. I've heard more than enough. Yes, sir. Well, well I apologise if I uh, overtaxed you. Understanding is um, so important for literary appreciation. Mm. I understand you better than you think. And I haven't come here to praise you. I'm on neighbourhood watch business. Oh, he shouldn't be let out on his own these days. This is a book group meeting. Neighbourhood watch next week, OK? On this occasion, the two overlap. I'm so sorry, everybody. I always feel so drained after reading, so I, I need a little line down. Then stay where you are, Lionel. Uh, Lionel, <laughs> you're right. He has got Lionel no Hipkiss, to give him his full name. That's right, isn't it? I didn't want to tell you this. When I went into the kitchen to sort out the pudding, I opened the cupboard and it was full of bottles. Empty spirit bottles, mainly. It's probably a reason why. Yeah. Well, I know why. See, when her and my dad split up, she was in bits. I mean, despite what she said today, she loved him. So it was the divorce? Yeah. No, kind of. You see, I... I chose Dad. I left her on her own. I left her and I never looked back. So you see all this, this is my fault. I did this to her. I did this. And I can never forgive myself for that. He didn't write hard grinding. Oh, he does enjoy that dubious distinction. Mel Hartwright was a pseudonym that he used during a uh, mercifully brief writing career. He said that Lionel Hipkiss was a publisher. We, we wrote out our checks to Lionel Hipkiss. Yes, I didn't want to confuse you. I just thought it'd be simply... And he didn't want to confuse the King's Lynn readers, the Deelham Dover Literary Society and the Solihull Book Club. They invested, like you, that no book ever saw the light of day. From what I've discovered, our friend here has been living off the kindness of strangers for years. Including Her Majesty. Con artist. And far more adept than he ever was as a writer. He's made a good living out of this scam. That's why your publisher and your agent cut you off. To think that I hand you in my home and I let you take me out to dinner. All them double brandies gratis. All those free breakfasts. I haven't contacted the police. He deceived you, not me. You can decide his fate. Look, way before you condemn me, would you just ask yourselves what harm I've really done? Didn't you enjoy our outings, Audrey? Didn't I make you feel special, Fred? When you thought you were going to be immortalised? And Roy, you said yourself, you love the opportunity to share your railway stories. But I spent a whole afternoon listening to you go on about the dullard. It's a um, mallard, actually, but, yeah, point, point taken. Well, whatever. Uh, Norris. I know I've let you down, 
But if I inspired you to let loose your creativity... And that's the biggest crime of all. <laughs> Fact is, you were going to waltz out of that door with our money. Talking of which... Well, we can't let you do this again. Go on, Roy. Well, all right. But you know a case like this will attract some uh, local publicity and I could paint some pretty unpleasant caricatures. The vain pub landlord. The anorak cafe owner. The lonely crimper. So easily flattered and not forgetting the chattering crone and the improbably coiffured news agent and her Walter Mitty assistant scurrying back to the burnt offerings from Eleanor Rigby's kitchen and at the head of this sorry band. 